group of senior businessmen who hold shares in Woolworths have instructed me to represent them here today and at the upcoming AGM, where I will make the views of these shareholders known. The group of businessmen that own shares in Woolworths have made it clear that they are concerned regarding the increasingly irresponsible manner in which the management of Woolworths is handling the Boycott Woolworths campaign. The businessmen are of the view that firstly, the management of Woolworths should have met with the activists advancing this campaign, regardless of whether the company agrees with the activists or not. Meeting and trying to resolve this issue should have been the first step. Going to court to resolve this issue should only have been the last option pursued by Woolworths. That to date, Woolworths has declined a face-to-face -face meeting with BDS South Africa and other human rights groups goes against good governance principles. For society, corporates are arguably one of society's most potent change agents for sustainable world. The economic reality today is a key factor to a safer, cleaner, healthier and thriving society lies as much with policy makers as with corporates who influence policy, attitudes and behavior through their operations and business philosophies. Woolworths certainly fits the mold, not just in South Africa, but in a global context of a company wanting to be a socially responsible company. This was acutely pointed out by the group's chief executive officer and chairman's statement in the Woolworths 2014 Good Business Journey. Here is an excerpt. Our customer research around our campaigns and initiatives, as well as tracking studies, show an ever-growing awareness of the Woolworths Good Business Journey. Customers interact with us increasingly through social media channels and are a key source of fresh ideas and priorities for the business. We see these interactions as opportunities to improve our business, to bring innovation and to better understand what is important to our customers. Last year, Woolworths was ranked first in the RapTrack Reputation Index Survey of South African companies. It was also rated in the top three of the Sunday Times Top 100 companies for 2013 and was included in the JSC Socially Responsible Investment Index for 2013-14. It must therefore come as a surprise that Woolworths now faces the prospect of ongoing boycotts and protests. The BDS boycott has arguably already become one of the largest non-labor mass actions against a South African company since 1994. Woolworths has developed enormous goodwill for the company with the company's brand and reputation being wisely crafted on good citizenship and squeaky clean values. However, it is for precisely these reasons that Woolworths should pay attention to BDS. Why is Woolworths seemingly being singled out? The most obvious reason is that Woolworths has committed itself and its practices to certain values for which it, en it enjoys incredible support. For example, Woolworths is a signatory to the UN Global Compact. According to the UNGC, it is the world's largest corporate citizenship and sustainability initiative. The UNGC is underpinned by principles derived from international instruments, including the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The UN Global Compact asks companies to embrace, support and enact within their sphere of influence a set of core values in the area of human rights, labor standards, the environment and anti-corruption. On human rights, it says, businesses should support and respect the protection of internationally proclaimed human rights and make sure that they are not complicit in human rights abuses. BDS South Africa and, other, and others contend that Woolworths is flouting the first principle by trading with Israel, particularly with companies that may have involvement, trade or some other dealings with Israeli settlement companies. 
by refusing to engage in public discourse over the Israel trade issue, Woolworths is not only potentially undermining its commitment to the UNGC, but inviting questions about all other commitments and social obligations, which have become ingrained in the company and its brand DNA. It's not difficult for companies to support universal causes like promoting education, healthy eating, or addressing poverty. But a company that claims to be the bastion for corporate governance and corporate citizenship, we believe, cannot simply put its head in the sand when faced with complex issues and unsettling questions. Balancing the expectations and sometimes competing objectives is arguably the most critical challenge a company leadership faces. From Woolworth's perspective, the answer is simple. Either make a concerted effort to uphold these principles it promises or openly move away from these principles. In terms of the group of businessmen that I represent, I think going back to good corporate governance, something that King Tu has guided us on, it's really in the better interests of consumers in South Africa and globally that if Woolworths have built their brand architecture around good corporate governance and being a, a company that's a responsible corporate citizen. They need to disclose and then take action in terms of what their long-term strategy is in dealing with companies like this. It's not only Israeli companies, but there are a whole range of other companies. And sourcing local is obviously first prize. Thank you.